Really cool. We've got one final app to demo for you today, and I'm really excited to introduce Russell Olson, who's Vice President for Product Management at Vitel. Uh, the app uh, he's about to demo is called Atmosphere, which uh, is designed to allow a care team to simultaneously advance uh, a multitude, he says, hundreds of quality uh, initiatives at the same time uh, using a patient uh, communication engine, really combining analytics and um, intervention. So take it away, Russell. Great, thank you. Uh, I'll be um, short and sweet. I believe in lean principles, uh, so we're going to get right to the to the point here. Um, as we just heard about in the last uh, few uh, speakers, uh, we've, there's been a major paradigm shift uh, from fee for service to accountable care organizations, and, and really the mandates given on healthcare today uh, to reduce uh, costs and improve quality, uh, moving uh, across this continuum really seem to be at odds with the current uh, processes uh, within the, the provider's office, which are primarily focused on those patients walking through the door. If we look at uh, an organization, if they were to do all the things that they need to do to address population health management, there, there just aren't enough hours in the day. By the time you look at chronic, preventative, acute care, uh, there just uh, there's enough hours in the day to accomplish all the interventions that really need to go on with the patient. Uh, and as Deming said, working harder is the worst plan. As Thomas Edison said, there's, uh, there's a way to do it better. We just need to find it. And uh, we believe that's what we've done uh, here at Datapalooza. That's what many of the companies are doing. That's why we're all here. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, an amazingly zippy way to engage uh, and provide personalized care to every patient uh, without hiring an army of people. So uh, we're, we see the uh, population health management construct here around defining populations, identifying care gaps, stratifying the risks, uh, the key point here, engaging patients to take action. Uh, when they do take action, coming in and managing their care and ultimately measuring the outcomes. And this is an ongoing uh, cycle here, fueled by data, analytics, and ultimately action. With that, I'm going to jump out and go into the demo here. Set up. All right. The first thing we see here on the on the uh, application is uh, scatter plot, and here uh, we have here is the ability to represent the entire population to view every patient on one screen. And we've added a couple different dimensions to really give a, a unique perspective on the population. So we see in this particular example, I have the population stratified by uh, the A1C values uh, on, the y, on the Y axis and the LDL values on the X axis. Uh, I've got uh, the color shading in the background. Zero to seven is, uh, for A1C is, is good under control. Seven to eight, nine is yellow and nine plus is red. We have the similar on the Y axis. Uh, the zero to 100 is green, 100 to 130 is yellow and 130 plus is red. We also have a couple other dimensions uh, as far as the color of the dots. So if we remove the, um, we have the patients that are under control, have no care opportunities. We have those that have one to six and six plus care opportunities. And really we're able to begin getting a feel for our, our population, but not just a feel for the dots on a graph, but we can actually uh, hover over one and, and know who the patient is. Uh, we can zoom in. Uh, and uh, really start, you know, playing with the population. But again, looking is, is not enough. Having a, a report that shows patients on a graph or a report that I download to Excel uh, just drives, you know, these hundreds of interventions that I can't, can't action. So what I'm going to show you today is, is how I'm going to engage 100, you know, 200 patients in, a, uh, in the Quit uh, Now texting program that is put out uh, uh, on the smoking.gov uh, website. So I'm going to jump over to the care coordination tool. And I've got here a visit prep pulled up, a visit prep report. So again, if I'm looking at patients coming into the office, but as I mentioned earlier, it's not just about those that show up and making sure they get all the treatment. It's about reaching out to the patients that are, that are not here today. So I'm going to go ahead and change my parameters to a patient-focused. I'm going to look for alerts that contain smoking. And I'm going to look for ages. It's in the texting program. I'm going to do ages between, uh, let's just say, 18 
and 30. Go ahead and run this. Now what's happening is uh, there are over 300 different uh, clinical algorithms that FITO is running on a nightly basis across the data. So data is received from both the electronic medical record systems as well as the practice management systems. So we're getting both the billing, the scheduling, and the clinical data values. Uh, these protocols run across uh, that data on a nightly basis, pre-identifying all these patients so I can simply, uh, within a few seconds, click and pull up a, a list of, of patients. So I've got my list of patients. Uh, again, I, I could export them to Excel. I could hire a lot of people to, to begin calling these patients and working with them, or I can choose to uh, take a bulk action. So I'm gonna send campaign. This takes me over to the campaign uh, module. I'm able to choose an intervention program. I'm gonna choose the quit now texting program. Save and continue. I verify my parameters, name my campaign. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this one, but I'll take us to the campaign list. So here you can see uh, hundreds of, uh, and could be thousands of intervention programs that I can run. I can tailor them, I can customize them. I can focus on high risk, high priority patients. I can focus on uh, low risk patients, uh, patients that are under disease control, uh, allowing them to uh, get the pat on the back and, and keep it up. Uh, I can also come in and evaluate what's going on with the program. So I'm gonna drill into uh, one I launched earlier. Here I've got the patients that are uh, participating in the program, their status, number of days completed, uh, other information, last communication date. I'm gonna drill into John Doe. I can see his specific uh, history, the messages how he received, how he responded, the chronology of communication events, and the most recent message and his uh, smoking status. So here in a matter of minutes, uh, I've been able to engage hundreds of patients I can focus on the outliers. I can follow up uh, on the high risk, uh, high touch patients and let the uh, automation take care of the rest. With that, I'm going to jump back into the presentation. Great, so in less than five minutes, we've accomplished the following. An in-depth clinical analysis of patients that would benefit from a, the smoking cessation program we created a personalized intervention program. We've engaged hundreds of patients, and uh, I've allowed myself some extra time to do a deep dive, and maybe we'll get a cup of coffee. And I'll, I'll leave you all with, the, uh, with this note from uh, Don Berwick, that uh, we have all the tools. Uh, we're here at Datapalooza. We've, uh, there's, hundreds upon hundreds of databases and other data elements made public on a daily basis. Uh, there's more collaboration between companies than ever before. Uh, it's time to, to start at scale and to flood the zone. And with that, I'll take any questions. Great. Yeah, so uh, we see ourselves sitting in between the, the facilitating the patient and provider communication process. So uh, a lot of the problems, some of the apps that we've seen out there today are, are patient focused, and there's, there's not a lot of connection back into the provider's office and their daily workflow. And so what we're looking to do is using our analytics and the data that we're collecting to fuel uh, some of the other apps that you've seen today. So um, is this uh, particular area, are you getting traction on the, uh, in hospitals, large hospitals, small hospitals, or are you getting more in physician practices? Where is it resonating, what you're doing? Uh, great question. Actually, uh, in, in all of those, uh, in all of the above there. So we, uh, prim our primary focus uh, is mostly in primary care, and with large uh, health systems, our primary customers. However, we've, uh, last fall, we launched a hospital product as well. And we're seeing that as all the, you know, all the healthcare uh, entities are merging and coming together, that the, the problems in the hospital are now becoming problems in, in primary care and vice versa. And, uh, and so it's all coming together from a care management and a care coordination perspective. Uh, Ross, I know you didn't show it, but could you say a couple of words about atmosphere and the, the opening of this as a platform? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so everything I showed there, you saw there's uh, other tabs and features. Uh, we've created a, a plat platform which we've named Atmosphere. Uh, and, and as I mentioned earlier, part of that platform is to open it up to allow other companies to come in and plug in their content 
and some of their protocols into our platform. We're working with a number of uh, people, not quite yet able to, to mention them by name yet, but uh, bring in other pieces such as um, predictive modeling uh, as well as uh, patient content. Thanks. Great. Thank you. All right, Russell, thanks a lot. That concludes today's uh, apps demo. Uh, we'll have more uh, apps demos tomorrow at 1 o'clock, same place, and then we'll start up tomorrow morning with the uh, apps and data uh, expo open at 8 to 9, and then opening remarks right back here at 9 a.m. Have a good night. Bye.